moment. Rajcast fans listening around the world have been waiting for. Live from the Rajcast studios in Mazomani, Wisconsin, it's time! One hour of mind-blowing conversation for the podcasting championship of the world. Introducing first, casting out of his office corner, he is a Chojitsu Grandmaster and a black belt at Knowledge Bomb University, boasting a perfect podcasting record of 420 wins with zero losses. He stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 180 and one half pounds, fighting at Amazomani, Wisconsin, introducing the reigning, defending, podcasting champion of the world, the broadcast very own Christopher Michael Carowitz. Don't let your kids watch it. What's up, everybody? It's Chris from the Brajcast. You can say it with me now. Brajcast. Decent one, decent one right there. Hey, everybody, I am with YouTube. I would say YouTube Hall of Famer. He should be YouTube Hall of Famer. My man, my boy, it come off an egg. It come off an egg. Say hello to the millions. Well, hey, everybody. What's going on, people? Hanging out with uh, <laughs> my buddy Chris with the Brajcast. What's up? Hanging out, talking baseball cards. I want to say cards with the tards, but that's totally just not. It's just too PC these days. If I say cards with the tards out loud, probably get kicked off of YouTube. But we are just a couple of tards talking about cards. I have no idea where this is coming from. It's not written down on any of my notes. <laughs> but anyways... You know how, how it goes here at the Brajcast, always wanting to talk to the people out in the community to get to know them a lot better. I came into this community hella late. All you people, you know each other, you know a lot more about each other than I do. So I'm super stoked to be able to get an hour of your time to talk some shit, to talk some baseball cards, to talk some UFC, and to talk some WWE and take a breath in between. Jesus, Louisa, give me the five-minute version, my friend, about how you got into collecting cards. All right. Uh, let me think. Well, first started uh, in 1982. Nice. I was, uh, was a little baby, uh, and uh, my aunt would uh, babysit me. And she lived in Brooklyn, New York. And, uh, you know, she didn't really have access to like big stores and stuff. It's all little bodegas and little shit like that. So she would always, she would always spoil me as best she could. She didn't have a lot of money, but she would buy me like generic wrestling figures and all the <laughs> like dumb little toys that the bodega would have. And uh, they had 1982 tops packs out there, probably, you know, a quarter a piece or whatever. So she'd buy me four or eight or, you know, 10 at a time, whatever she had. And uh, I don't even remember opening the cards, but like Papino said on, on your last one, uh, they were just a toy for me. You know, in my toy box, I'd have, you know, G.I. Joe's, WWF figures, Transformers, and my 1982 Topps baseball cards. Yeah. Just strewn about, you know, just bent and dented and stuff. Uh, and then what? I didn't get any cards in 83 or 84. And then 1985 came, you know, I'm seven, eight years old, whatever it is, seven, six, five, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I was like six years old. And uh, my dad bought me a couple of packks, again, like at the, like, you know, score, because we were in the, the Staten Island, 
1985 tops WWF cards. Nice. Uh, and so, you know, those just went with my 82 tops baseball cards in my box and, you know, getting, you know, played with and basically it was all sorted. Almost like like you do. I would sort them by team. Then I'd sort them by color. Then I'd yep. sort them by mustache. Yeah. By, you know, yep. Guys who looked mean and guys 100%. who looked nice. <laughs> you know, however I, I could. And then I, I never bought any 86 cards, never got any 86, but then 87 tops with the wood board. Yes. That's what got Yeah, me. buddy. Those are the first packs I remember opening. Those are the first packs that I bought with my own money. That was the first uh, set that I, I, you know, tried to put together by hand. Uh, so it was those 87 tops. Then uh, I basically collected during the worst of the junk era time, yeah. which was, uh, 87 to 93. So that seven year chunk, uh -huh. 87 to 93. Then, you know, girls and yep. college and yep. other things get your attention. And I basically didn't buy anything from 94 to 2000. Same so here. Seven year, you know, Same here. Year. And, uh, but the one thing, <laughs> it was like, I didn't even like really know that you could buy complete boxes. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> like nobody buys a whole box. Right, right. Like, right. 50 bucks. You buy a you gallon shit? of milk. You don't buy a whole <laughs> crate of gallons of milk. You know? Right. So uh, I, was at, I was at a Target. And there was some, you know, kid who obviously didn't want to be there behind the counter. And they had some baseball cards out. And they basically had a couple of unopened boxes. And these were like hobby boxes, not right. retail in 96. Right. They had 36 packs per box. And I think they were selling them per, per pack. And uh, I, I just, just for shits and giggles, went up there. And I was like, hey, dude, how much is this? And he like scanned it. And it basically came up as like the price of one pack. <laughs> so he's like yeah. that can't be right and i was like uh yeah it's probably right and i grabbed another one and i, I ended up buying two complete boxes of 96 tops for the uh, price of two know, packs like 11 to 14 <laughs> bucks something shitty like that and uh went home opened them up got all the, the mickey mantle reprint cards and shit like that yeah and um that was like the first time i had ever gotten a hobby box um, then I got back in 2000 and I've uh, been kind of doing it ever since. Man, it sounds a, it sounds like a very common theme amongst us collectors that are pretty much our generation, our age of collecting, getting into collecting mid to early eighties, going up to early nineties. And then just like you said, girls, cars driving, this is, we, none of us had internet. So we were leaving yeah. the fucking house out yeah of yeah. the house you know yeah. leaving the house we couldn't get instant porn lucky fucking kids these days they ain't gotta do nothing <laughs> i know remember having but, to, like, uh, for porn and stuff? you know it's the same story man uh, and then uh we we get out of the hobby because it it baseball wasn't exciting then and and upper deck came into the hobby and was exciting but i think baseball itself was getting pretty uh, maybe the term is like laugh, laugh, laugh a daisical or something like that. Just really mundane. And, and like I was talking with Pepino, it wasn't really till Maguire and Sosa mm -hmm. juice the fucking to the max and, yep. and put, put them back on. It made it exciting. Dude, yeah. I remember they were, they were cutting out of like network television to, to when Mark Maguire would go to <laughs> bed in prime yeah. time. Dude, that was real business. That was awesome. Yeah, they were televising their at bats. They're they at bats, and then they go right back to the, the show. Time, like so. they would, they would cut friends. Like, are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah. So that was really cool, you know. And then that kind of got the excitement back, and and a lot of us kind of got back. And of course, once we were in college and we had some jobs, a little bit of money here and there, you know, and and prices still weren't ridiculous. You know, yeah. there weren't twenty thousand uh, dollar briefcases of fucking tops transcendent every you know year <laughs> back then. That's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's crazy. Eighty seven tops, same here, man. And and you've probably heard me say it a million times. It's saw the Conseco right there with that green jersey, and he had that rookie cup there on the bottom of his shit. And and as a Hell kid, yeah. that just told me that he was like the man you know the one to be looking out for and and just fell in love man we just watched a lot of a's game as a kid and shit like that because espn would have 
Wednesday night baseball, Sunday night baseball, Friday night doubleheaders, and the A's were on the West Coast, so they played, you know, that, like, two-hour difference. So over here in the Midwest, like, I would get all sorts of A's games. It was awesome. Um, Love that shit. But with the Canseco Rookie Cup thing, it was really stunning because – it, the rookie cup had been absent for a long time. 87 was when they brought it back. Oh, so there was no rookie cup in 86 or dude. 85 or 84, you know, like, yeah. Mini mind explosion. I didn't even think about that. That's yeah, right. The rookie cup was big. Like before I was born in cards and then 87, it came back. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. That's right. And shit like that. Absolutely. There shit on so yeah that's right you know because back then to, you're like shit is this a rookie card you had to flip it over and if there was yeah. one year of stats then it was his rookie card because that's how yeah. shit was that's how you knew your mike greenwell was working yeah. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> mike fucking greenwell 88 score top prospect look yeah. at this fucking guy Future sure stars, you, yep. fuck it <laughs> My, one of my favorites, dude, is Todd Van Poppel, man. I love yeah. fucking Todd Van Poppel. <laughs> Scott Erickson. These oh, guys yeah. were the next Nolan Ryans, man, and just, <laughs> just fizzle, dizzle, shizzle. Just like, unfortunately, most players now, I mean, it's just this 10%. I don't know. It's crazy to me. I got a Ronald Acuna Jr. rookie card out of a, a pack this like this morning or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, cool, but there's like literally – 275 different ronald acuna juniors with that little yeah. rookie card logo on there so it's like do i really have his you know what, what yeah. is this what is this well, hey like, remember like this. before the 2018 cards started coming out and everyone was talking about otani otani this otani that 100 percent. and i kind of thought like i'm not going to try to get an otani card but hey hopefully maybe I'll if get i pull it, it yep yep yeah. And now I'm like swimming in Otani's. They come in everything, like the uh, Chronicles. Dude, like, like I was watching a, a Chronicles break, and it's like another Otani. Every like pack. Otani. Yep. They, they got no symbols, and they're, they're thousand different <laughs> kinds, and it's like Jesus, you know. And they want to talk shit about junk wax era, man. We are in like hella junk wax era. Just two point We just don't know because we're in it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll talk about it 30 years from now, like we talk about 1980s cards 30 years ago. Yeah. You know, we just don't yeah, realize we're in want, it. Say what you want about the junk wax. I mean, obviously, I don't like going on Craigslist and seeing somebody trying to sell yes. you know, 200 junk wax cards for, for 10 grand or whatever. <laughs> but uh, this hobby, as it is today, was built on the back of yeah. that junk era shit. You good know? call. Good call. And it was like, that, that was the freaking thing. You know, like my buddy was talking about, like he was prospecting back then, and you could buy like, 500 ellis burks cards like through the mail and, <laughs> you know stuff like that to like really prospect so yeah you know nobody likes 91 donruss and shit like that but you know we wouldn't have the hobby we have today if it wasn't for you know crazy people like us i you know, agree up all the, the stuff in the, the, those really bad years like, i like agree 88 to 90 <laughs> to like like until jeter's rookie Right. Yeah, yeah, they were a little crunchy and stale for a few years. <laughs> but uh, you know, I I, I kind of like the '89 design a little bit, and maybe I'm maybe I'm liking it just because uh, the WWE heritage this year <laughs> is using it. So I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> so what's what's the um, what's your PC now? Like like I'm like I said, I'm only a year into the YouTube, so um from what i gather listen to me from what i gather um (laughs) definitely pc yankees i'm correct favorite team of all time no shit because that's because you're from the east coast but you live more or less on the west coast now like oh yeah Colorado now and love it i would never move (laughs) i would never ever move from there either my friend (laughs) did i just say freaking i'm on the bride right (laughs) freaking But yeah, so when so so Yankees PC, what about like a player, like a, a a personal player that you you go for? All right, well let me let me quickly kind of go over my PC. I uh, like this. Course, I could spend an hour just going over the UFC and WWE stuff that I collect, but talking nice. just uh, baseball, which is my main sport, is uh, obviously I love the Yankees. Um, 
I'd say that, uh, you know, as far as legends go, I uh, collect a lot of Whitey Ford uh, and Derek Jeter. I'd say those are my two favorite to collect. Uh, the reason why I started collecting Whitey Ford, I think I've said this, this before, it's a joke, but it's truth. Uh, <laughs> I can't afford Mickey Mantle, so yeah. I get his drinking <laughs> buddy, you know? Right. I, oh, and I uh, Billy Martin, too. Love Billy Martin. And uh, so then, uh, and then just dumb personal collections. Uh, the 19, my favorite card in the 1982 top set is uh, Franklin Stubbs. I collect yeah. that card. <laughs> Uh, there's a, a long story behind that one. And uh, 82 tops, pretty much, you know, my, my first two baseball sets, 82 tops and 87 tops. It's the uh, Brian Downing card. that I, I saw uh, that. Collect. That you super collect. I love super that. Collect. I want to get like the printing plates and shit, you know? That was one of the first videos I saw of yours was this Brian Downing. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? And then he's like, I'm super collecting and I lost it, dude. Yeah. I was like, yes. Yeah, I've got a super collection that could be bought for like three dollars. <laughs> fuck. Dude, that's my game. Low end as <laughs> fuck. Gutter. Unfortunately, you know, it's cheap. Catches yeah. at the wall. Are you kidding me, man? I can, I'm putting this binder together for nickels and pennies on the dollar, man. And they're, they're great. They're, it's as I flip through these pages, I'm like, this is fucking awesome, man. And that's what this is all about, isn't it? You know, yep. like, like not, oh, this is not worth $9 or I didn't get my money back from my pack, man. When I open oh, Don't do it that way. Box, You're never going to get your money you'll back. You'll never be happy in this game. Ever, ever, sure. ever, man. This is a collector's game, man. This is, this is really only a few, I think, survive flipping for life. That's yeah. a tough one, you know especially with the online and, and eBay and, and everywhere else that you can get cards. There's so many places you can get cards that I don't even know about. Cause I'm such a noob. I just <laughs> crawl on fee and think I know what the fuck I'm doing. And there's all these other places, you know, I'm probably missing out on so many cool Jose Canseco cards that I could, you know, fill in little slots in my PC for cheap. But Well, you might think you're missing out, but I, I kind of think that eBay is the best place to buy cards not not sell cards but uh the, there you go the best place to buy cards because cards so often go for so much less than they should and uh the thing that you were kind of you brought up was that uh one thing that kind of sucks about our hobby is that cards are so easy to acquire yeah and so hard to move yeah <laughs> you know? like nobody wants your fucking pocket junk and no nope. shit hits that nobody no. wants and you, your one color unnumbered patches and you, care packages you know, yeah and so, so you end up giving them away Fuck. I ain't going to oh, get 10 man. bucks for this, but if it puts a smile on your face, man. Fuck yeah, right. dude. Dellen Batansis relics going yeah. to oh, you. Oh, yeah. You see Dellen Batansis? Yep. Dellen Batansis I, know you're trying to, I know you're trying to make a an actual pair of pants from relics. <laughs> well, I'm going to get it. I got like a cod piece now, but I'm going to get the whole thing. That's awesome. <coughs> so, excuse me. Hey, if you're coughing and uh, hacking, I'm going to take a break uh, get her break. done well i'll put up the old the old graphic of a few moments later <laughs> you know what my favorite graphic of yours is though yeah fucking here i'll throw it up real quick Shut the fuck up, you cunt! boom that's gonna be strange because it's gonna be thrown up in the future but i guarantee you it was up there <laughs> this is crazy it's like we're in the matrix right right now. right choo, choo, choo. Let's talk about the hollow earth and the uh, race of reptilian people that live inside it. Goodness. Don't get me started on flat earth. Flat earth is a crazy notion. Fucking, uh, we can go for, for a while on that, <laughs> but we're here to talk about the hobby. <laughs> yeah. Talking about baseball cards. So you know how like, you know, shit's so expensive nowadays. Like back in our day, you could collect everything. Yes. And now yeah. you have to super specialize. Yes. So it's like, well, okay, I'm just going to collect baseball. And it's like, well, th there's too many products. There's too much stuff coming out. Okay, well, I'll just collect Yankees and Rockies. 
It's like, it's still too much. There's you know? still too Literally, much. Just Rockies, purple refractors. Yeah. Just active Yankees <laughs> in Yankees uniforms. And, and you, you keep, you know, getting smaller and smaller to get down to what you can PC, you know? Yep, yep. What you can handle. Yeah, because yeah. it can just get out of control, man. Like, sure. I'm breaking boxes of, uh, you know, Panini Chronicles of Riddick here and... That shit was out, you know, two, three months ago. It's just like old news, you know? You know, I didn't even film it because it's like no one wants to watch that garbage ass shit. That shit is so old news right now, you know? So I just filmed the hits later on, you know? I'm starting to figure that out. Like, one thing that that I don't like watching, you know, uh, listen to me complaining that that I don't really enjoy, I guess, is watching people struggle to open mail, struggle (laughs) to open that stupid ass fucking box. Man, just open that shit. And yeah. then click record. You know, yeah. I don't give. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. My time's valuable. <laughs> My time is valuable here. I got. I'm following so many. You know, I got. I watch a lot of videos. Like I yeah. legitly fall back on shows that I watch in real life, or I, not you know whatever in real life. You know, on like network TV shows and Netflix because I have so many YouTube channels that I l- legitly yeah. enjoy. I like to watch, and it's just like man cut it out with the fucking uh with the packages and shit i just you know i fast forward in that shit yeah, and then i think be- like our generation grew up on tv 100 percent. And, and this generation is growing up on youtube and social media like my friends got a couple of kids like 14 and 9 and like youtube is their television youtube is their cable You know, it's like they don't park themselves in front of the TV, but they're, you know, on their, uh, you know, computers or or smartphones as much as their parents will allow them, you know? A hundred percent. Remember, I feel like, um, and I say this a lot too, that in our generation, and, and again, most of the people who are listening to this, like our baseball card collections were like our YouTube because when like nowadays any any kid that wants that pc bryce harper or whatnot and if he wants to think about him or see him or just enjoy some harper highlights or whatever he can just jump on his phone and there's a plethora plethora endless in 4k you know blah 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 we didn't have that so when i was sitting there like you know at home like meh and uh (laughs) just sitting there yeah. I was like thinking about Jose, and, you know, in my head with my imagination, we could look yeah. at our baseball cards at least. And like, yeah. that was our, our, that was our screen, this little two and a half by three and a half inch screen. And then of course you hear me say all this again, you flip that shit over and those, all those fucking stats on the back. So we like oh, yeah. engaged in that shit, read them all, the, who the italics were, led the league in this. And it's like, yeah. how come everybody didn't lead the league in, games played that had 162 i never understood yeah. that <laughs> it should all be a tie. <laughs> it's like it should all be a motherfucking tie yeah you know so but um you know speaking of youtube how old first of all first of all back the truck yeah. up here i am talking with it come off a egg mr hey, 200 <laughs> mr 282 subs himself oh thanks brother how old how where did where did where did it come off an egg come from? Are you allowed to tell this story? I, I feel like yeah, the statute of limitations is up now. <laughs> so I think we're okay. Uh right. The story of it come off an egg, which, you know, is just it comes with an egg, uh is a story my uh, cousin told me when I was like a little kid. And it's it's blurry, but it was either like she was either quoting a stand up comedian or an actual conversation that she had in a restaurant. <laughs> but it was I'm not telling the story right, but it was something like, you know, hey, yeah, I'd like to order the whatever platter, but uh, uh, no egg, please. But it come with an egg. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I understand that. But I, I just want to make sure that, you know, I, I, I don't get any egg in my order. Uh, it, uh, it come for egg. <laughs> okay, I, I understand that, but coming back around here, right? Uh, let's say I'm allergic to eggs, and I don't want any eggs in the uh, it, it come for. So it was like one of those things, and it kept going on, just like 
dumb inside jokes that families had Understood. that became my family's dumb inside joke really <laughs> so it'd be like uh you know, hey, what do you want for breakfast this morning? Oh, hey, it's breakfast. It come for egg. Yeah. Lunch, it come for <laughs> egg, you know. And, and it just became like a dumb little inside joke with me and my family. Uh, and then when I was just deciding a YouTube name, I was like, I'm, I'm weird. I'm a weird motherfucker. Like, fucking, um, I, I, I want something that's not going to be, that's going to catch people's attention. Yep. It's going to be funny to say. Yep. You know, and my first name is Mike, <laughs> which is like like Smith in the card printing community. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I mean, two of the biggest YouTubers in our community are both named Mike. Right. And, then, and there's many, many others. So I didn't want to be like Mike's card or <laughs> Mike the collector or baseball Mike. Like, no. Right. That's, that's, that's forgettable. That's bullshit. No, that's not going to get anyone's attention. I kind of get off on like when someone is saying the name of my YouTube channel on yep. theirs. Yep. I'm like, that's the first time you've ever uttered those words together. <laughs> that's not a common saying. And you 100%. can see the list of names I didn't use and almost <laughs> used instead of it come with an egg. But um you know, I, I, I wanted it to be like funny to hear, funny to say, you know, something that, that, that people would say and be something that, you know, like uh, I made you utter words that like Dylan Batanza's dance is pantsless. Yep. Nobody yep. but me and people who've seen my channel say that. So yep. like something dumb, you know, it, it was it was almost a death row pillow fight. Uh, <laughs> it was almost lunatic playground. It was almost <laughs> like just a, a ton of like weird names went through. I was like, you know what? I'm just doing a come of a egg. People can figure it out. You know? <laughs> and my whole thing was I, I didn't want to be like the baseball card guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like my channel is not about baseball cards. Mm -hmm. My channel is just about weird, random wackiness. And yeah, I, I'm passionate about baseball cards. So yeah, show a lot of that on my videos. But it was the whole appeal was trying to like. You know, I want to be welcomed by the sports card community, but I want non-collectors to be able to watch my video and be like, man, I laughed. That was good. Whatever. Yes. Yes. 100 percent. 100 percent. Like my wife's not a collector of any any sorts. But when I'm watching YouTube videos out in the living room on the big screen, she hears your voice and she stops and listens, you know, because you're a personality. You know, you're 100 percent authentic and you're rememberable rememberable i'm rememberable what the fuck did i just say i don't even think that's a fucking word but you know but um where did where did uh well hey everybody where, when did you start doing that oh uh, it was weird like so pepino man was kind of like the first like straight even though he's gay the first uh, straight <laughs> youtuber who did cards uh that i um kind of started watching yeah and then someone like said hey man how did you come up with your you know uh what he says at the beginning of his videos you know yeah and uh how did you come up with your intro and his answer was something along the lines of like you can't pick your intro no it just you happens gotta just make videos <laughs> yeah <and> people have <laughs> shit they say a lot yeah like, oh that dude always says this or that yep. person uses this phrase a lot yeah and just after you make 50 100 200 videos you're gonna have shit you say a lot yeah and so uh i wanted something the voice was kind of the voice that i use in commercials if i'm doing voiceovers nice but also a bit of like chef from south park um you know so it, it was like it's like a mix between chef from south park doing like uh well hey children <laughs> something like that mixed with um pro wrestling commentator jim ross yeah who on yep. the old georgia championship wrestling he would end every show with uh so long everybody so it's basically you know chef um you know well hey children and uh you know his uh so long everybody yeah. <laughs> together made my own thing if, if you look at older videos of mine i, I don't quite have it right i'm like well, hello. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> Sometimes I'll pop up some old ass videos of mine and shit and just cringe. I'll be like, God damn it. What am I? <laughs> Dude, that's a tip I, I want to give to anybody. If there's a YouTube channel you subscribe to and you like, 
do yourself a favor and go back into the archives. Yeah. And find some of that person's early shit. Watch that shit evolve. Like, you know, sometimes I, I post a video, I, I get a bunch of views. And then I go back and like, man, I posted a video like a year and a half ago that was way better. <laughs> and it's got like 30 views. Like, you know, I wish I could like re-release some of my old classics. And, right, uh, right. Try to get some views off that, but. You know, you you talk about um, things, how your channels evolve. Um, mine has, you, you mentioned Pepino, uh, Passion for Cards comes to mind. Uh, you know, it tells everybody, stay classy. Yeah. Um, it remind, and then there's the nuances that everybody, some people, you know, uh, Pepino, he does his, just his editing and shit like that. It reminds me a lot, <laughs> a lot of, um, it's, it's what makes WWE work one of the big things that makes WWE work is, is if I'm going to go to a show, I want to see the rock say everything that the rock is going to say. I want him to come down to the ring. Like he's going to come down. I want him to show me. And I, you know what I'm saying? These things that I look for every single week, play the hits, play the, you know, and I'm looking for that. And as we all of us as we evolve in in our videos and shit and develop these things it seems to be like the same fucking thing yeah. where where everybody's kind of you know waiting for your intro uh you know waiting for for my intro or outro or just something just and and it seems to to work you know what i'm saying it's just like um i mean shit from wrestling we we know and it we know shit from when we were kids, you know, like things that wrestlers, you know, would always say or always do oh, yeah. or, like, or like jingles from when we were kids and shit like that. So it's crazy to see how everybody kind of does have those um, little nuances and everybody kind of repeats, you know, their best and coolest and funniest shit and stuff like that. <laughs> how Play the how... Hits, man. You'll go to Leonard Skinner and don't hear Freebird, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> How old is your YouTube channel? Uh, my channel and your channel are about the same age. Oh, nice. Uh, so we just got into the game same time. Yeah. Um, what, early August of uh, 2017. Yep. So uh, I'm, I'm less than a year and a half old, uh, almost a year and a half uh, on YouTube. Uh, so, yeah. What made you want to do your own YouTube channel? Just wanted to get in the game. Of like, what's that? Just wanted to get in the game. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get famous and rich. Man. Right? <laughs> Didn't we all? Didn't we yeah, all think yeah, that yeah. for like five minutes? Yeah, right. No, I mean, just uh, <laughs> watching other people's stuff, um, and and kind of just saying like, I could do that, like, or like, I got that card, or yep. you know, something like that, and just figuring like, hey, give it a shot one day. Um, and, and, and also, probably like most people, I thought it would be easier. I thought yeah. success would come quicker. <laughs> you know, you see someone doing it and you're like, man, he's got 3,000 subscribers and I could do that. Mm -hmm. And then you do it for a year and you got like 70 and it's like, eh, you didn't really set the world on fire like I yeah. thought I would. You know? Let's exchange ideas and opinions on that topic because now that i you know we are like basically the same age youtube wise probably real and life uh too. yeah exactly right and uh you, i have 150 you're at 280 and why is that <laughs> why is that <laughs> yeah what gets subscribers that's that's Do I have to like smash question. my face with a fucking frying pan for a minute, you know, and then yeah. record that shit? I mean, well, now now that you've invented that awesome broadcast flipsy remember game, there you go. You're doing something that's key in getting subscribers, and that's giving shit away for sure. That's, that's huge, and like, um, for some wrestling fans that get this, I want it to be like Chris Candido. You know, no gimmicks needed, <laughs> you know, whether yep. like, yeah, I'm the voice guy or the rants guy or the ASMR guy or the whatever yep. guy, the Dellen Batansis guy, like you were like looking for that gimmick. And when your first 10 gimmicks don't work, you're like, well, <laughs> <screw it."> shit. 
hundred percent, man. But can we agree that both you and I have criminally low subscriber counts? I would say that, but I just never wanted to say that out loud. <laughs> well, I said it, so go ahead, run with it. Right. I, I 150 in two years. Is that how long? One year? Two years? Year and a half-ish. Year and a half. That's yeah. 18 months. It's about nine uh but also, yeah. like, I get I get depressed when the number of videos <laughs> I make starts to creep up to the amount of subs that I have. Yeah, I've and far surpassed that. I start to feel that. bad about myself, I would look at your channel. Like, <laughs> here's a guy. Here's a guy who's funnier than me, has better editing than me, has 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 a ton of videos and, yep. and less subscribers. Yeah, I'm like, man, like I want to complain about it, but I can't because <laughs> like you got something to complain about, brother. I try, you know, I link up with Insta and Twitter and my Facebook and, and every morning, uh, you know, I pump out the, the, the morning video five days a week, you know, to say what's up to the world and to tell everybody to have a kick-ass motherfucking day. And, and then the occasional baseball video and shit like that. And it's just like, I don't, I don't know. Nobody, even on Facebook, my, my, nobody on Facebook, you know, I'll upload them and shit. No likes, no, hardly any views. I, I don't know. I feel like, uh, I wonder if the, uh, the graphic language sometimes might come back to bite us. If, uh, some people have like a filter on or something that YouTube doesn't even put me or us in front of some people. Do you think that might be a thing? It it might, you know, because I, I think you know, it's kind of people who complain get get justice, make yeah. change, you know, and stuff like that. So because you if, see all that, if you have hundreds of people that like you, but but one person with nothing to do all day, but you know, make a, a complaint about you, <laughs> they're gonna listen to that, you know, and uh, you know, and do you, you uh, clean up your language or do you be yourself? You know? That's what I'm struggling with right now. Do you do you yeah. Do you, do you, how much of the, the, how many layers of the onion do you want to peel away? You know, I mean, I don't, I, how many layers of myself do I want to peel away till I, until I'm just recording and it's just me and I'm mundane and <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm properly watching my language because yeah. children are possibly, pre- you know, fuck that, man. Like, yeah, that, it's not me and that's not why I started this shit. So, yeah. Because it it's our it, job to watch your kids. Right. <laughs> I'm just human. You know, we use we use some filth and language, but we're not like dirty sailors and we're not attacking anybody and aggressive. No, we just no. use the words because they're words. It's just air coming off our vocal cords, landing on the precious eardrums of others. You know, it's nothing. Yeah. But some people just, yeah, they process shit a little bit fucking different, but is what it is. But nonetheless, it could be hurting, but... I'm I'm feeling like I you know what it is what it is man if if I have only 150 subscribers then fuck that man that's 150 of the coolest people on earth right there and they're the luckiest <laughs> Those are real people dudes. on earth those are real fucking gangsters right there you know with yeah. me since the beginning and that's enough for me honestly I can't keep up with everybody else's videos mailing motherfuckers shit and having BFRG and do you know I can't. What if I had a thousand people? Shit, I don't even know what I'd fucking do. You know right? Said? So maybe I don't know. And one thing, because I feel like I might come off as like complaining about that, but I want to say like for uh, oh shit, my mind just uh, went where I was going. Uh, I wonder uh, why. Quick, quick little break. Hold on. <laughs> but uh. Shit, I really legitimately forgot where I was going there. I I don't know why my memory... It happens to me, my friend. Yeah. Are you doing the Snoop Dogg dancing thing right now? I will put it up there. It is already up there. (laughs) (laughs) I'll think about it later. I'll come back around to that. Right. What we were talking about is the criminally... Listen to us, some bitter-ass old men. (laughs) Yeah, hell yeah. (laughs) Get off my lawn, kid. But don't forget to like and subscribe, you little yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your fucking friends. I'm a miserable bastard, right. but please like and subscribe. <laughs> like, no. This fake ass, right? 
Yeah. No way. Just going to continue to be myself and have fun with it. Um, I, you know, a lot of people can come in the, to the community fast and hard. You, you just like Pepino said, cause he's a veteran of the game. He sees it too. A veteran of the game. I shouldn't say that he hasn't been in it too long, but he's also seen it too, where people will send out the right care packages, get the right shout outs. And you know, there's a, yeah. there's a way to, to go about it, but I'm really not about that. Like I said, I'm, I'm just about fucking just being real. And if you found me, lucky you, man, the algorithm <laughs> worked you yeah. know, fucking a and, and, and sit back and relax. Cause you're about to go for a fucking ride. Fuck yeah. Oh, I, I remembered what I, what I forgot. There we go. It was, uh, having a underwhelming amount of subscribers um, does aid in the wackiness and creativity and risks that you can take as a small channel. I, 100%. I know some, I've talked to some of the, the big dogs in our community and uh, they do feel a bit handcuffed at times to maybe serve a greater audience. So just like you said, like, I don't curse a lot on my videos. I, I try not to. If one slips out, no big deal or whatnot. Hundred percent. If like if like Mike O let one slip out, you know, it'd be like riots in the streets and stuff. You know, we're we're granted a little more freedom <laughs> to be the wackiness that we are. This is and true. If our channels ever do grow to the place where we're getting monetized and we're making a couple dozen dollars a month on yeah this buddy day, you know then we'll know we at least grew it the right way 100 percent. come on 100%. people like i check my thing and i see that i lost a couple subscribers yeah look at the fuck my channel is free yeah i don't post so much that you're pissed i don't post so little that you think where did he go like, it, this is free like, it's i know and then I get mad. I go through my subscriber list. Like, oh, for a Who is it? Out. Who is it? Who is gone, it? Gone, gone, <laughs> boring, too long. I don't like, never liked you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's on my rants. I get emotional when I'm not here. I do. I lost a couple here and there the other days, too. And I'm like, what the hell, man? Like, what yeah. did I do? What yeah. did I say? Or when somebody dislikes a video, I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, butthurt and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to dislike me just telling you to have a good day, motherfucker? Man, what the yeah. fuck is this? <laughs> but the world's full of haters, man. You put 100 people yeah. in the room, at least 10 of them are going to fucking hate on your shit, no matter what. <laughs> and no matter what, I'm a hater too. You. Know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 99 people say you're awesome. One person's like, ah, I don't really like them. And you get right in that problem. Well, right. Like right. <laughs> well, I'll change. I'll change. change. Give me a frying pan. Just yeah. start smashing what my face again. <laughs> Sneak, sneaking. Speaking of smashing motherfuckers in the face, what did you think of? This is definitely switching gears. I'm headed over to Connor and Khabib now. Um, what did you think of the thorough clinic, basically, that Khabib put on on Connor? Oh man, it was crazy. I I like Connor. I like yep. watching him fight. Yep. I like his shit talking. I like yep. when WWE leaks into UFC. It's it's the yep. greatest shit. Um, but uh Connor beat him like a father disciplining his son. Yeah. It was hard to watch. Khabib smashed him, bro. And I was yeah. a little scared because you know, like Connor talked shit to Americans yeah and americans are like okay well i'll kick your ass but we'll, we'll see we'll yeah see some time, you know, and, like that. Why, I oughta. and now he's like you know like ripping on a dude's religion yeah and country and father bringing in words like terrorists russia yeah and like oh dude connor like not everybody plays like you play. Dude. Yeah, bro <laughs> and so like i, I you know because because usually like at a press conference you know, Connor talks a bunch of shit, and then his opponent, like, you know, talks shit back and, you know, does pretty good, maybe not as good as Connor. Right. And Habib was just like stone faced, like, no, he's going to pay for what he said. Yeah. Just wait. Like, just I'm wait. Get him. Six October. Yeah. Six October. Yeah. Just and wait. Like, oh, you will so be. Are, yeah. are you going to shake Connor's <laughs> hand when it's done? He's like, no. Never. No. Send he location. Said, you know, like, like, he's like, like, you said the wrong shit, dude. And like, 
straight so, up. You know, what was what it was. Man. <laughs> yeah, you're watching two different levels. You're, you know, classic, classic striker versus grappler, which we all love. Can yeah. the striker keep it up, you know, and can the grappler get him down? But, man, you the, the, the scales are never even in a fight. It's never 50-50, and yeah. the wrestler, in my humble opinion – does have a bit of an advantage because they have that grinder mindset and he yep. happens to be the number one wrestler I can possibly think of. He does it his whole life. He smashes men. He smashes bears. Any foreign, and Connor's foreign too, so we didn't have any like really like American born, but I always, always will take like the fucking foreign fighter because <laughs> they've grown up harder. Yep. They, they didn't train in fucking in UFC gyms like we got and with and, air conditioning with, you know, yeah. Even, the, even like Matt Sarah gyms. I mean, you know, no diss yeah. on that. Cause I know Matt Sarah's listening, but I'm talking, you know, <laughs> but I'm talking you know, like shopping mall type, uh, you know, strip mall type gyms are even better than what they got in Brazil. And they have 13 world champions and they're still training in fucking, yeah. sellers you know and that's hard that's a that's a motherfucker who's hungry who isn't thinking literally about hungry. This. yeah literally hungry and all he yeah. has to do is smash you and his family can eat for another two years yeah you're going down Holmes. Yeah. there's no talk you know none of this talking that's khabib fucking stone face killer man and i was nervous as shit i was nervous as shit as in Converse diaz too but a little bit different reasons because those happen to be two of my favorite <laughs> fighters. So it's like, I love oh, the Diaz I boys. dude, I love it, dude. Like Nick Diaz, my favorite of all time. Then I find out in the ultimate fighter, like season five, that he has a brother, Nate. Mm -hmm. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Second favorite of all time now, you know, and then Connor comes in. So those are my top three. So that was hard to watch. Nate and and Connor fight because you know I didn't want any of them to lose you know yeah you want them both to look good and I think they they did that. I think they, they did yeah they both came out of the fight with uh, a greater stock value yeah isn't that crazy uh, ability to get booked in the future Nobody you can lose anything. you can lose the yeah get the actual L yeah on the paper but come out way better than yep. than as if you got a fucking win and and you're right about that man they both did and. And it'll be interesting to see if that same magic's there when Connor fights again, because we all know he has a multi-fight contract. So it's like, oh man, like as much as I fucking love you and love your game and all this shit, man, it's like a lot of that was because you backed it up proper. Like if he would have put up maybe a hell of a fight, but man, mm -hmm. he got straight out class like so hard. So it's... <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see what his next fight would be. There's rumors of GSP. What What do you think of that? Uh, that would be sick. Uh, I keep betting against GSP coming back. Uh, I always feel like he's you know kind of got nothing left to prove. And <laughs> while I love GSP, he's one of my favorites of all time. <clears throat> if you're looking for a really entertaining fight it's not always a gsp fight oh 100 you know, my friend by any means necessary a lot yeah of yeah and when you said like hey if you think a fight is boring you've never fought because yeah. they're, 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 they're sizing each other up and you know stuff like that but it's like i think gsp could beat anyone you put in front of him i think he's one of the greatest of all time i think he'd beat connor um, but I, I never really bet on him coming back for the big money stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He's got to be high thirties in age, you know, which is getting to be yeah. a little past the prime, you know, oh, yeah, you're in the senior can't... division of, of uh, UFC. Right. Time. But you know, DC's 40. We saw Couture do it. Yeah. Dude, DC is fucking smashing people, dude. Like, yeah, I love DC. I, enjoyed watching him like and, and and he's the one who said it there's levels to this shit son we yeah. we saw that on that last one i thoroughly enjoyed that man even though he got the he's got two massive losses uh you know i to john jones they they, they they're kind of stained they have many asterisks next to him because of the you know pe yeah. days or whatever so it's like that to, to me that shit didn't even really happen and dc is 
by far one of the greatest light heavyweight to heavyweight that you know that weight of guy yeah and in, in, of all better. time yeah. <clears throat> just smashing fools i think he's gonna fight brock make the biggest check he can and then that's it and then <laughs> yeah. an announcer <laughs> yeah and he's great at announcing too. yeah I yeah really he is his commentary yep and it's oh man i love yeah listening to uh either retired fighters or current fighters do commentary because obviously they know what the fuck they're talking about you know like when we'd listen to mike goldberg back in the day and joe rogan like mike mm-hmm. goldberg didn't know shit he was yeah. there for the ad plugs and we're brought to you by and and you know this that and this but and joe rogan was the color who knew all of you know because he rolls and shit so he knew all the terminology and explained all this shit but i really enjoy listening to dc i enjoy listening to jeff or not jeff hardy (laughs) dan hardy i enjoy listening to his commentary it's good Um, seeing him back on camera again definitely definitely back in the day dude the mohawk i was all about it and left him behind yeah yeah unfortunately i think he lost to gsp they gave him his golden moment and uh it was too much and you know it was a 25 minute fight because george st pierre leads uh all fighters in time on in the octagon which is i don't think something you want to lead the no. to lead the UFC. Oh, I want to say this guy smashes his <laughs> yeah. for ten seconds. Like Francis, like, winner yeah. by decision. <laughs> Twenty five oh. minutes of yeah. the same. Oh, that's rough, man. That's rough. But anyway, talking a lot of UFC. What and well, shit. What's the next one? It's got to be fairly large, right? If we're getting into the holiday season. Yeah, it's the well. You got the uh, girls. Joanna Young Jacek is fighting for the Ooh. number one contendership. Ooh, in a new division, uh, right? Yeah, and then who's on top in that card? That's the Conan event. You didn't see the the one that uh, just happened. No, I, I didn't. On that Korean zombie fight. That's um, Chan Sung Jung, right? The Korean yeah. zombie, always yeah, known for yeah. just fucking coming forward, man. Tell Yair me about Rodriguez. it, man. And I'd kind of compare it to like, remember that Ultimate Fighter fight between Bonner and and Griffin? Dude, yeah, that's what put it on the map. I yeah, watched that like, fight they, too. Like, were swinging, going at each other, like it was very much like that. And because you haven't seen the fight, I'm not going to say the very end, but they they almost went all five rounds. No doubt, huh? The Just fight slugging. ended with one second left. Oh in the man! Final round. No doubt. <laughs> and just so sick. So and they did what I hate is they picked the guys up and put a microphone right in front. Yeah, of them. not after <laughs> that. Like, man. No, these guys are concussed. Sure. They don't know yeah. what they're saying. They yeah. can't catch his breath. <laughs> like, the Korean zombie owns one of these submissions. Uh, I, I can't remember what it is, but he's like one of only two people to pull it off. And it's like this this body lock boa constrictor with a neck crank on the side. I can't remember what it's called. That's not that St. Flu one, is it? The I don't know if that's the Von Flu choke or not. Yeah, that way, because I... I... I never miss a uh, episode of the Ultimate Fighter show. Yep, yep. I love that show, and and I remember when I saw it, and they like christened the move after. Yep, you know? <laughs> yep. Jason Von Flew, I think that was. I, yep. I can't remember I his all first name. Guys, Court McGee. Oh, dude, I was such a dude. Court McGee hit me in the fucking feels strings with his story on that. You know, being a fucking yeah crack or shit i'm i don't know what the fuck you had just a recovering hard drug drugs. He was coming hard, hard drugs, drugs man yeah, yeah. And, and when he won or something you know he he gave out that message to anybody who was having a hard day you know he said some fucking cool shit and i was like tear in my yeah. eye and shit i was like you go fucking court yeah. mcgee love court mcgee and michael, yeah. chiesa, michael chiesa i was just yeah. gonna say that same name man and fucking <clears throat> talking Dude, I've watched like almost all of them. You know, Forrest and Bon and uh, fucking I, Joe Daddy was was in an early season. Yeah, he fucking, was in early and a late season. <laughs> and a late season, right, man? Dude, we're watching season twenty eight. Yeah, season twenty eight. It's crazy. <laughs> but that's a way to get to know these fighters because honestly, man, when your roster's five hundred fighters deep. It's hard to get to know and and each card if you're if you're watching it all on on FX1 the Facebook pre, you know all the other card besides you know there's like 14 fights all night 
I don't know any of these people. So what the ultimate fighter did was give me that little mini soap opera to like get to know these people a little bit. Cause on fight day, they get to tell you all about their story and shit, you know? And so when these people actually do come in the UFC, when they're walking down the aisle, I know some shit about these dudes. Exactly. Because exactly. when the roster's vested interest in a, uh, a fight between two guys you've never heard of that i've never heard of exactly yeah. except the quick little two you know the two minute little video you know that they they show before they walk out you know but yeah it's yeah. like a it, there's yeah just like you said vested interest so yeah you really care it's like <laughs> i think wwf wwe yep. started it with, yep. with a show called tough enough yep 100 percent. but they kind of made a joke about it and they didn't really do it right. And I agree. They, they kind of dropped the ball several times. I agree. With, uh, pushing people who had become mini famous off of it. And then I think UFC copied that idea, made the ultimate fighter show, but they did it right. Yep. yep. They had the right people. They had the right situation. Yep. And, and, and they made sure it's a star making machine. Yep. Like it my wife never out. gave a shit about fighting or yep. UFC. But now she gets into the soap opera part of the Ultimate Fighter, and it's just like, oh, he's the guy whose mom died. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. the guy who loves the puppy. Yep. Or whatever. And now, like, yeah, I want to see him smash that dude's face. Right. You know? and, like, and and there's females on there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. It makes you. It's it's it, it's a star making thing. Like it I'll is. look at the UFC card and be like. Haven't heard of him. Haven't heard of him. Have oh, he's from the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> and if there's 28 season of let's just average 10 people, and that's the, the number is bigger than that, that's 280 names that if if you said, I'd probably remember. You know, yeah. most of them like you. If you'd be like this name, this name, remember this guy. You know, I'd be like, oh yeah, he is up there in the old memory bank. I do remember that guy. Yeah, yeah definitely. Keith Jardine. Keith Jardine. Yeah, hundred percent. Dude, that dude. Mean- the dean of me, the ugliest man alive, but he will <laughs> smash you, dude. And, and probably dude, the I nicest guy. A good dude. I was man. gonna say probably the nicest guy alive. He's man. really a nice guy, right. bro. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. The dean of me, Keith Jar, fucking dean. <laughs> had a great face for fighting. Yeah, he did. He had the look, man. They, they tried to give him a good deal. push. Yep. And they he tried couldn't to... that He's been in some movies. He's done yeah. some stuff. Yep. One hundred percent. And, 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 you know, contestants from the show have, have, have come back and become coaches. Have, yeah. Have gone on yep. to become champions and yep. will go on to be Hall of Famers, you know? It's crazy. That's so crazy. They, they, it's, it's, it's probably, marketing-wise, the best thing UFC has ever done. Dude, Literally. and they perfected it. They've perfected yeah. it. They've made their own gym where they film every, you know, it's just, yep. it's they, when you've done something 28 seasons, it's, it's go time. It's it's perfected and it's hella efficient and it's a machine well oiled. Yeah. Now they've got a money printing machine. You know, <laughs> yeah. just... <laughs> You're watching this season then. I, I watch every season <laughs> for sure. Yeah. hundred percent. So you watch, well, maybe the last one was big Mo uh, getting too drunk and that old girl was going to leave and shit like that. Yeah, well, you, you get one every season. Yeah, every you, season, do. you do. You do, man. one person that's like, man, but that's fighting. Yep. You, like, you have to create characters that people would pay hard-earned money to, to see. see get their ass kicked. Yep, yep. Why, like, like, the Diaz boys should be getting paid as much money as Conor McGregor. A hundred percent. Because just as many dollars go into seeing Conor kick ass... Is, is how much money people pay to, to, to see the Diaz boys get their get up their ass kicked. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> they've gotten, you know, they've had so many great fights now. It's like, I used to like watching the Diaz boys get their asses kicked, but now I like watching them kick ass. Yep. Right. Yeah, right. A hundred percent. Yep. A hundred percent. So you got to create good guys and bad guys, faces and heels. I say it always comes back to pro wrestling, but. I think uh, they uh, borrow just the right amount of theater from pro yes, wrestling yes. to uh, make it perfect, you know? Yep, yep. I remember they tried to do it live one year, but they only did that once because I think that was too much, too hectic. But the, I think Faber and maybe Dillashaw were coaches on that one or something, but that was a, that was a rough one, a rough season to watch. It wasn't like any of the other ones. Yeah, I, I never like it when the two coaches <laughs> – are getting into it more than the actual dude. Like yeah, yeah. Fight, 
but this is the, the, the young guy's time to shine. Like, yes. Rampage Jackson. That was like, just like, going to say that, man. Dude, me and you are just – we're on the same vibe right now, my friend. I was just – was Rampage and Rashad. 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 Yeah. He would just – just, just – yeah. treat me like a bitch. What, treat what you like say? Treat you me like a bitch. <laughs> what you saying? What you saying? Rashad. Rashad. Yeah. I was like, do is he but really tech? just saying the same thing again and again and again and again? Like, <laughs> oh, and then he gets so pissed he kicked down a motherfucking little plastic door. That a little. Drunk, so that's highlight <laughs> real shit for all time. But, oh, uh, Rashad, Rashad, you're gonna do nothing. 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 I mean, just just ten yeah, minutes like, of I'm that. My remote control. Like, wrong with it. No, <laughs> the TV repeating himself. Right, right. right. Oh shit, Rampage and Rashad. But it is kind of cool to see them. Sometimes the coaches fight. You know, we wanted to see yeah. Shamrock and uh and Tito, Tito fight, so yeah. so that went down. Um yeah, the Ultimate Fighter has evolved into quite a beast, and I've it's cool to have gone along for the whole ride, basically, man. Yeah. Like like we were saying, you know, the, the big thing about that last pay-per-view with the Korean zombie fight was that uh, it was the 25th, it was right here in Denver, the oh, 25th anniversary of UFC. Dope, and very it's like, cool. I love, it, it, it must be how like my dad felt about the NFL. It's like, I'm getting into a sport that's not been a sport for very long. Yes, like, exactly. You're... Or my, my grandpa, she's, it's like, uh, you know, like my, the sport I love is freaking 15 years younger than me. Right, you know? like, right. And you know, it's like, history. Like the baseball started in like the late 1700s or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, I understand. I, I get you. And we've been around through it all. It just, dude, I remember there was a point, you know, when, when, when the two fighters would get into the north south, you know, basically 69 in, and the yeah. crowd would giggle. I would giggle. The, <laughs> we were all watching and we'd all giggle. <laughs> but now, nobody's giggling and when the guy gets out of the position and gets up the crowd's <laughs> clapping you know like the crowd's educated <laughs> myself and everybody we've all grown with it we're seeing women fight and that was a little weird i mean honestly for me it was just a little weird at first but <laughs> only for a minute but be because you know it's just mma and I respect all these these fighters as people and shit and uh, we just have all grown with it, and in, and in, in a small way, I think it's made me a better person just by watching that <laughs> yeah. because they're all such positive fucking people. Mixed martial mm -hmm. arts, martial arts is life art. Yeah. You're learning everything, and, and and it's all about hard work, dedication. These people give up a lot. Their families sacrifice a lot, and they're going out there in a fucking cage, bro, locking it in a little mini stadium with people watching with cameras in their face. Shit, I would never understand. Yeah, close to naked. Close to you know, naked. And like, it's like, go, attack this motherfucker, win. Yeah. For Someone my entertainment. trying to kill you. Yeah. Until, the until it off. stops, until you get him. Yeah. And just for my entertainment so I can smoke some weed eat some Cheetos and maybe flip through it on Fox yeah. sports one. Cause you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just crazy to me. Like, and it's unfortunate that those guys, you know, I think the pay is coming, coming up, but you know, yeah. we all know it's like basically 20,000 to, to, to go and 20,000 like to win, you get another. And that's why everybody fights for the $50,000 sub of the night fight. Yeah. They want the, the bonuses. man. You want that bonus, man. Cause you got to, you know, 20 grand, you have to fight two to three times. You know, to to make all the money to live off of you, sixty grand is three fights. Taxed is yeah. UFC grand. doesn't mind those bonuses. Those <laughs> the bonuses are taxed. Oh, so incredibly. No like, shit, right? The you guys know, get a fraction of that bonus is from so, from what I've heard from some dudes I know. Exactly. You know, so I mean, these guys are they're putting it out there, man. And at any time, it's uh, it's it as injury prone as football could be. Yep. You know, and just and these guys get salaries that are astronomical. So I mean, Connor's coming in, changing the game. Yeah, when, I love when, seeing guys get paid. Yes, exactly. They deserve it. That a UFC guy is 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 getting overpaid or is too like no right. Freaking, it, it, he earns what he, he's getting. You know. If I just found out that the company I work for right now in real life just got sold for $4.4 .4 billion, I'd be like, yeah, 
I think I want to raise, motherfucker. I didn't realize you guys were making this. You know what I'm saying? What the yep. fuck? 20,000. If I put that into a calculator right now, it's about seven zeros, and then a number <laughs> is what the percent is. You know what I'm saying? And what these mm-hmm. motherfuckers are, are paying versus what they're getting. So Yeah. But I, we could rant and rave all day, my friend. We have hit an hour. My phone is probably going to blow up right now. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we got to cut it off. But, man, it was a good time. It was uh, a, been a pleasure, time. my friend. Thank you for the opportunity, man. Fuck yeah. And definitely, I want to have you come back on now that we've laid this foundation. Come back on and we'll talk some more shit. <laughs> update each other on our pod or on a podcast, on our uh, collections and stuff like that. And just shoot the breeze, man. Yeah, we did a lot of UFC. Maybe we'll do some wrestling next time. Yeah, for sure, you know, for <laughs> sure. I gets to going on the UFC. It, it's fun to talk to somebody oh, that's too. pretty much as passionate about it as I am and then watches kind of the same things and, and shit like that and has the favorite fighters that I do. So that was pretty fucking cool, man. Well, yeah, man, it's been a pleasure. Like I said, I uh, really appreciate it. You know, big big fan of your wildly underrated channel. Fuck yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Well, he's the man, he's the myth, he's the legend, he's it, come up an egg, Mr. 282 subs, I'm coming for you, I'm at 150, by the end of this fucking show, whenever I'm done, I should be at about 1,000. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. You curse too much, motherfucker. I know, bitch ass meow fuck. Anyways, guys, you know the DZ. It is never, ever about me, Z. It is always about you. What we can all do to take steps towards those dreams, take steps towards those goals, take steps towards those little PC goals that we have in mind. It's always about spreading love, spreading positivity. It come off an egg. I thank you so much, everybody. That's it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to drop a like, a comment, subscribe. Because as you know, it hurts our feelings if you don't. (laughs) And everybody, good night. I'm out. All right, man. Take care, buddy. Yeah, man. Great talking to you. All right. Later. Say it with me now. What's going down? Chris from the broadcast bringing the sound. Yeah, best in the game. Canseco should be his name. Straight from Little League to YouTube Hall of Fame. On top with the tops and the top hat. Can't stop too high. You should know that. The champ in the world of podcast. Uh, mail day. Car breaks. Bars for days. Collect everything. Funny face. Crazy names. Subscribe now. Come get a taste. Hey, spreading the love and positivity. Sunday night is BFRG. Surprise, surprise, never know what it gon' be. Click fast, don't miss out. Brajcast, say it with me now.